My name is Galen and I'm an application engineer with CogiScan. Today, in this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate to you some of CogiScan's traceability capabilities. More and more, traceability is a requirement in electronics manufacturing. It is becoming fundamental to remaining competitive. A sound traceability solution will equip manufacturers with detailed reporting for the complete production process. Who touched the product and when, what equipment and operations it went through, the outcome of those operations, what materials were used and where they came from, showing the end customer why they can trust your finished product. Anything less isn't really a complete traceability solution. At CogiScan, we try to make collecting traceability data as quick, easy, and painless as possible through the use of automation and machine communication. This poses a challenge for me since much of the information used to populate traceability reports is collected in the background via our Connect machine interfaces. That's great for efficient production but a hindrance when it comes to performing a demonstration. Regardless of that, let's now look at a fairly typical production process. This particular line we'll be working with is comprised of a mix of SMT and post-SMT operations. While every manufacturer has their own processes and machine sets, in addition to have the industry's largest collection of machine interfaces, CogiScan has hardware and software flexible enough to adapt to most any electronics assembly environment. Electronics assemblies are sole focus and in our 20 plus years, there isn't much we haven't seen. I will walk you through this production line, briefly explaining what is happening at each operation, and then I'll walk you through the resulting traceability report, showing you the complete history of one product. Again, this is just an example of a production line. The modular nature of CogiScan solutions means that we can trace as much or as little of the production process as desired. First machine on the line is a laser marker that burns a unique serial number onto each product. This is critical for traceability, as it provides a mean to track the product during and after production. As with most of the other machines, CogiScan can communicate with this laser marker with our Connect interface in order to automatically retrieve the serial number, the product part number, the work order, and the quantity. If you don't have an automated labeling process, we have other ways we can obtain the serial number information. The next machine in the line would generally be a stencil printer. Stencil printers are excellent from a demonstration standpoint as there is a surprising amount of information available from them. You'll see later in the traceability report that in conjunction with our setup traceability capabilities, we can collect information about the consumables, the tooling, program name, and process data. We have a separate video about setup validation, so check that out if interested. CogiScan will want to capture the serial number of the product as it enters the stencil printer so that we can associate the process and the material information to the proper product. And I know what you may be thinking. You're thinking most stencil printers don't scan product serial numbers, but we have you covered on that. CogiScan Product Flow Controller, or a PFC, can be installed on the production line to scan the serial number and send it in real time to the system via your network. This is a product flow controller. On the front, we have an LCD and a touch panel. And then on the bottom, we have ports for SMEMA, one or two barcode readers, of course, power, and a network cable. On this demo line, I'm employing PFCs to send product barcode information prior to the machines that typically may not have that capability. After the stencil printer, the product will be conveyed to a solder paste inspection machine. CogiScan will communicate directly with the machine to automatically collect serial number and inspection results. These inspection results can include defect descriptions, defect images, and a link to the inspection results file. Component placement is the next operation. There are a number of possibilities here depending on the machine type and options. The machines may or may not scan the product serial numbers. They may or may not have the ability to validate the component setup and send consumption data. If the machines provide this information, then CogiScan can simply collect the serial number and the component consumption details directly from them. If not, product flow controllers and our own setup validation task can be employed in order to obtain that information. Our product will then enter the reflow oven. CogiScan will communicate directly with the reflow oven via Connect to generally record and store the machine's current program name as well as available process data. You'll see an example of this in the report. AOI is the next machine. As with SPI, CogiScan will communicate directly with the AOM machine to collect the serial number and inspection results. And while a bit outside of the scope of today's video, CogiScan can also create 
maintain and enforce product routing. Therefore, we may, when necessary, route defective products to a rework operation and then back to the normal production path. In the traceability report, we'll provide the name of the rework operator, information about the rework they perform, and details about any materials they apply to the product. Our boards will then head to a router or depanelization station. For a panelized PCB, operations will usually be applied to all circuits or boards on the panel, even if only a single serial number is scanned. Once we depanelize that PCB, Scan will expect a separate scan for each product serial number. Scan can depanelize the product automatically once it reaches a specified point in the route, or we can communicate with a machine which will provide real-time notification once a panel has been routed. Our newly depanelized product now moves to a manual station for hand soldering. Kojuscan's operator interface can be deployed to facilitate rework, as mentioned previously, or manual operations such as this. Components applied to the product, as well as the name or ID of the operator who performed the operation, will be included in the traceability report. The last step in our product's journey is functional test. Similar to an inspection operation, Scan would typically communicate directly with the machine to collect the serial number and the test results. Those results may be configured to include a link to the test results file. Hopefully that's a sufficient explanation of the process. Now let's look at a resulting report. Scan's web-based reports are quick and easy to access. We simply log in, choose our report, which in this case is the product history report, type or scan in our serial number, so I will go ahead and scan it in. In this case, my serial number is 1999, which just happens to be the year Scan was founded. I'll step you through this from the top and the bottom. This is an example of a report that we might get if we ran a product through the production line that I just showed you, starting with the serial number, the work order, and the part number information. The section after that includes information about the various route steps the product went through, starting with product release, screen printing, all the way down to product completion. We'll have the event name, start and end, the timestamp for the operation, the name of the operation, the name of the route the product was on, the name of the machine. In some cases, we'll have a program ID, which is provided to us by the machine. Uh, it might be that the product has a remaining floor life because an MSD component or something similar was applied to the product, and then a user may have been logged into the system, as is the case here, or we may have received the event directly from the machine, as is the case here. The section after that includes defect information. So we can see that the AOI machine found two defects on this product. Defects on L5 and U1. They were missing and solder bridges. We have the component part numbers, as well as a comment about each of those defects. A couple minutes later, I reworked both of those same defects. The section after that includes information about the raw materials included at the various operations. So as screen printing, for example, we can see that we applied information about the stencil and the paste to the product. Paste includes information about the supplier as well as the supplier part number. And then we have a unique identifier for each of those materials. We have the name, the, the machine that populated them. And in some cases, we have a reference ID. That's the case with the placement operation down a little lower. So again, we have the component part number, we have the component unique identifier, information about the supplier, the supplier part number, and then which machine populated the component. And in some cases, as with this MSD component, it we have a remaining floor life. Similar situation with the rework and manual operations. We have raw materials that are applied at those operations. After that, we have process data. So two of our machines generated process data, the stencil printer and the reflow oven. For the stencil printer, the operator, me, manually input process information into the operator interface. A more interesting case may be the reflow oven because that's where we automatically collected process information from the machine. So that would typically be information such as the conveyor speeds, the temperatures of the various zones, whether nitrogen is in use, etc. The final section is files that we may have collected from the machine. So again, from the AOI machine, we've managed to collect some files. Those are stored in our database, things such as the inspection results from the machine. 
So this would be the actual file generated by the machine with the results about defects, uh, what is good, what is not good, and what needs to be reworked. We also have some images from the machines. So we may have images about the actual defect. Here is our component that is missing. Or we may have information and images of the entire circuit board. That basically concludes the product history report. I do have one bonus report for you. If we go up and look at the components and raw materials that were replaced at some of our operations, such as the placement operations, and we go ahead and click on the unique identifier of one of those components, we'll be presented with some options. Let's look at the raw material usage history report. This report provides you information about where this specific component was used. So if this component were defective in some manner and you needed to pull up information about where it was applied, this would tell you which serial numbers this component was applied to. So in a worst case scenario, they could be recalled. And then again, if I just click on one of these serial, one of these serial numbers, we're taken immediately back to the product history report. There's a lot more I could talk about with regard to traceability, but this seems like a good stopping point for this introduction. So I thank you for your time. Though I've just covered the basics, I hope you now have a clear understanding of our traceability capabilities, which are a small but important part of Kojiscan's scalable and modular platform. If you have questions or want to discuss your situation in further detail, please reach out to your local representative or pay us a visit at kojiscan.com. Thanks again.